So, interesting thing that happened today. I nearly got run over. Um, and I was gonna complain that this is my second time doing this video before I realized that I am alive and maybe I should complain. Uh, so, what are we doing today? We are going to attempt something new um, and fresh and fun. And oh my god, do you like my hair? It's so pretty, right? It's so much prettier than when I was being depressed last week. Um, and I thought I needed a change and I'm so happy with it and I did it myself and I didn't know if anybody wanted to see me doing it, but I assumed you didn't, so I didn't record that. Um, before I get into what I actually want to do today, uh, I just briefly want to say thank you to everybody who donated to our Sober October campaign. Uh, we raised over £300 and if I can edit a video to any degree, I will put a picture of it somewhere. Um, so, what did I want to do today? What did I want to do today? I wanted to do a reading. Um, and no, it's not scary. Well, the story's scary. It's not going to be like a spirit reading or a palm reading. I literally want to read a story to you. Um, and how did I come to this? Basically, I came to this because after many years of being absent from a site called Novellas, which is a story reading and writing site, um, I have realized that it's currently really, really dead. Um, and I want it to stop being dead. So. I thought maybe if I engage myself in the community again, maybe I can bring it back to life. Um, and this story I initially picked out more or less around the Halloween season, so it is a scary story. Um, but you know what? It's not Christmas yet, so technically it's still Halloween. Um, I know there are people who are going to kill me for saying that. Um, but yeah, um, I've been a member of that site for probably over five to six years now, um, and it deeply saddens me <laughs> to my core that the site has become so dead, like there's nobody posting anything anymore. Like I posted something called a mumble, which is almost like a Facebook post, like a wall post, and it was there for hours. Back when I was using it, mumbles used to just pile on top of each other. Um, nothing would be there for hours. Um, so I want to try doing this just to give, just to sh first of all, to shine some light on this author who did an amazing job um, of writing this story, and also just to uh, allow people. Um, yeah, sorry just to allow novellas uh, back into just to give novellas back some publicity because like I have had my back and forth with novellas but at the end of the day they published my story they publish my stories as audiobooks and I will leave a link to the one that I know has been fully published and established um, down below um, and I don't know when the other one's coming out but I know it's in the works um, and you know at the end of the day they did do that for me and I feel like this would be my way of giving back by just engaging a little bit more with their community um, so I'm gonna read this story and as you can see I have made a lot of notes now I would not get terrified by these notes um, I was trying to be as delightful as possible, but also just point, I, I have a few things to say about it. Good things and bad things. Well, let's not call them bad things. Let's, let's call them things to just look out for. Um, uh, but I'll get to that at the end. I'm just going to read this. I'm going to introduce the author, who is Julio Gutail, and I've been stalling on saying that name because I feel like I've butchered it, but 
please forgive me. I'll leave your links in the description. I'll leave your story in the description. Thank you so much for allowing me to read this story. And the story is called The Baying of the Hounds. Um, and I do apologize. I will be looking down at this for the majority of the time that I will be reading it. But you know what? <sighs> it's Halloween and we're going to get some reading done. So let's start. Can you see me? I hope you can see me because I'm not fixing that. The Baying of the Hounds It was dawning another sunless day, same thing as the last three weeks. I had not slept, neither that night, nor the other three or four. I think I had lost even the notion of time. I spent the whole dawn in an old armchair that used to belong to my grandfather. It smelled of mould and old age, but even that did not make me leave. I had drained all four bottles of cheap whiskey. A table was full of ferocious termites, never satisfied of rotting wood. The darkness of that abandoned room gradually dissipated, giving way to the morbid grey of the new miserable day. I hardly moved, my neck stiff, always looking at the same dark spot on the peeling wall. My eyes were frozen, they did not blink, and in my mind only a haunting passed. When finally that single point was clear, I got to see that damn picture again. I can say that we were happy or not. I never knew, or ever will. I still remember the day we took that photo. We were quite young, excited about life. But gradually all our dreams were languished, and the truth was so crude that life had become an eternal funeral, lulled by songs of requiem. For some time I chewed on those memories, always catatonic, unresponsive, letting the sea of sombre memories travel the dusty corridors of my mind. But suddenly, I heard the baying of the neighbours' dogs. They were going on a hunt again, enjoying their free autumn mornings. That sound ripped me out of my limbo. After many hours I moved again, my muscles ached, my head weighed a ton, and my legs took forever to respond. I tried to get up, but I fell, not back in the armchair, but on the dirty floor. I was stretched out there, like a mutt, starving. With blind effort, I tried to rise again. I got it, but from the path between the cold floor to the height of the flower... Uh, Jesus Christ. But from the path between the cold floor to the height of the foul-smelling air, thousands of faces crossed my eyes, accusing me, wanting to stone me, and blaming me for everything. Whispers in my ear, coming from all sides. I felt so numb that nothing affected me. I felt nothing, neither good nor bad. Everything just turned into a kaleidoscope of hallucinations. I would like to understand. Why? Why she told me so many lies. One lie after the other. And with that sickly fixation in my head, I took a step forwards, towards a living room window. The light, weak and pale, burned my eyes. And in the haze that formed in front of me, I saw with clarity his cynical face, smiling cheerfully with yet another of his lies. I leaned on one side of the window, took a deep breath. A little of the mist dissipated, slight remnants of lucidity flashed for a moment. Gradually, the stinging of my eyes gave way, 
and I was able to look out, glimpsing the desolate landscape. I realized that I, it was drizzling, weak but constant. A grey veil covered the cypress grove just ahead of the house and mixed in that spectral haze. I saw more and more faces. The hounds continued to bay. My head throbbed, dry mouth as if full of sand, and despite the slight improvement of my eyes, I still saw everything blurred and distorted. I tried to turn and stumbled a few steps, numb, drunk, knocking things over in every corner. I was trying to follow the path of the light lit in the bathroom. I made it. The stench did not bother me. The pale, dim light of the lamp that swayed like a pendulum gave the filthy room a ghastly air, filled with restless, whispering ghosts, pointing their imaginary fingers, charging me with accusations and clamouring for my death. The baying of the hound still echoed, non-stop, as did the clatter of horses' hooves following some animal's blood. Now I was leaning against the sink of dry vomit, staring, full of hallucinations. The tiled, dirt-filled, decrepitly old floor. I was panting heavily, as if the air were fleeing from me. I looked in the broken mirror. What I saw was anything but a human being. A gaunt, yellow-skinned figure with a curly beard full of knots, dead eyes lost in a horizon of lies. I opened the small cabinet and took the first jar I saw. I filled my hand with pills and shoved them all into my mouth and swallowed them with the brown bitter water that came out of the tap. The sensation of it pouring down my throat reminded, reminded me of the very moment I took the first stab. Dip. Why did I decide to do this when I can't read? Deep, ripping, right in the neck. At that same instant, my nostrils remembered the smell of blood, which covered me whole. Beyond what lay on the ground, I think she could see in the last moments her face, reflected in that hot, slimy liquid that flowed from her belly after the next blow. Fury is something that blinds a man. I do not respect... I do not remember what her expression was like. In fact, everything that happened between picking up the knife in the kitchen, walking quietly through the aisles of the house, and killing her, was somehow erased from my memory. It is a lapse complete pitch. I only remember from the first stab onward. I left the bathroom. The pills had some effect, minimal, weak, so much that I've swallowed them day after day, but it was still something. My head cleared and many of the ghosts evaporated before my aching eyes, plunging the house into shadows and silence somehow more disturbing than all the tumult that the spirits inflicted on my mind. <clears throat> Far away the hound still bayed, tireless and determined. I dragged my feet down a totally dark corridor, spitting a thick catar on the floor feeling my nose close and the airlessness almost claustrophobic. I do not remember if I thought of anything or if there was only a gigantic emptiness in my head. Before I realised it, I was standing before a rusted iron door. Without much effort, I opened it. My eyes this time did not burn. 
they were only a little frosted. And when the world cleared, I could see the wooden porch and the cypress grove. The door behind me closed with a strong gust of wind, so strong it caused an echo that rang through the house. And I looked at the floor and saw dozens of newspapers still rolled up, still in plastic bags. I knew very well what was in the headlines, from the most serious to the most sensational tabloids. A little beside, just below a window, was a wooden bench. A bench that my father had built. He just cut out a whole generation. <laughs> a bench which my grandfather had built with his own hands many years before. I picked up some of the newspapers lying on the floor and sat on the bench, letting myself fall so that the old thing creaked and almost gave way. The effect of the pills had passed, and my head was throbbing again. Dizziness came along this time, my muscles squeezed back so hard it seemed like they would fall off my bones. The bile had come up in an uncontrollable spurt. I almost fell off, my abdomen contracting in such a way that I felt as if there was a hole in my guts. My sight was dull again. A fever came from nowhere, trembling and clenching my teeth. I could see a mixed and confused scene from the past, so not so distant, in a delirium that ran so close, so full of insanity. She smiled. She smiled so sweetly that for a fraction of an instant she had deceived me. A lie so tasty, convenient, and that for so long believed. I believed. I saw her long hair, so black and silky, a seductive spell that I could never resist. And her eyes, those two eyes gleamed like sapphires. I danced in an open flowery field that exuded life and happiness on all sides. But then the world darkened, flashing on and off. I heard screams, I felt blood on my hands and anger, that same anger. I was wide-eyed, staring at a leaden sky until I was ripped, ripped out of it all when a cold hand grabbed the back of my neck. I kept fantasizing about things from the past, but I turned around in pain aching for the hand that had touched me, but there was nothing, no one, but the imaginary bodies of remorse. Swirling scenes of cruelty and madness continued to pass in front of my eyes. I opened one of the papers. On the cover were photos of a mutilated body, eyes so open and yet so seductive. I perceived a smile the smile that had provoked me. She was after me. The smile was chasing me, everywhere. Never in front, never directly, never facing me. Only in small details. A painting, a photo, a blur on the floor of the house. I opened others, the same story, in other words, other versions, other inventions. They did not know. They would never know the harsh and cruel truth. The photos revived my memory of that moment. Without pity, the photographers had recorded every puncture I had made in her. The pools of blood clotted on the floor, the body disfigured, everything. Everything. And the newspapers had sold. Newspapers were piling up. I passed through them one by one. The news did not age in those weeks, until I got to the last. The date was tomorrow's, and on the cover was a destroyed house. A house destroyed by fire. My house. I could not read the story. Everything was blurred again before my eyes. Again, I could not distinguish between reality and delirium. I mumbled that mass of printed insanity and threw it away. 
I only remember hearing the noise of the paper slap against the mud on the dripping floor and the baying of the hounds. I rubbed my face hard, non-stop, reviewing endlessly all the scenes of the lie that had become our life together. Stretched out in that old bench, feeling intense pain, I did not know if they were real or the effect of so much drink and medicine. Why did she do all this to me? Why? I had completely given up, abandoned my childhood dreams, given up everything for her. Everything was perfect. A paradise of love and hope. And she shattered. She shattered it all with a naturalness that's what, that was an infinite... Uh, <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to emotify that, it didn't work. <laughs> And she shattered that with a naturalness that was an infinitely more painful stab than any I had struck her with. In the midst of so much remorse, remorse. In the midst of so much remorse, I heard a voice, a real voice, clear, so clear and so close to me. The first voice I had heard in more than a month, isolated in that lost, rotten hole in time. Hello, my dear friend. How are you? I do believe that Julio deserves some books. Like, it's, it's a good story, and that's not all of it. Like, you should read all of it. It's um, but I did want to go over my criticism. Now, I didn't want to read the whole story because I believe that the story deserves to be read in full by all of you lovely people who are watching this. Um, I didn't want to read the entire story. And it is a short story. Um, in total, it's about six pages. I just read the first sort of part where it gets interesting. Um, and it is an overall really good narrative. I really like the themes, um, and the themes include like anger, regret, um, how, you know, looking into the past to realise all the things you did. Um, also, I liked this like whole idea that this guy is trying to justify what he did. Um, and what he did is terrible. He murdered a woman, or, you know, you'll find out later. But he, he definitely murdered somebody. Um, and like, I like that theme of like, he's sparing himself nothing, he is trying to justify what he did, even though he knows that what he did was wrong. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, I also enjoy the plot. Um, all the way through, the plot is very interesting. It really makes you feel for this guy, who is very clearly a murderer. Like, there is no question, he's a bad guy. But through... Julio takes you on a journey that makes you feel for him and I find that very interesting and I find that very creative. Um, the language, such a wide vocabulary. Like, I don't know if English is your first language. I did find quite a few grammatical issues, as you can probably tell if you're listening, listening Julio, I did change some of the story to make it flow better. Um, but the, the, the story is still very much intact, so I didn't want to change too much of it. Um, but you have a very wide vocabulary for someone I suspect, you know, English isn't your first language. And you use a lot of literary techniques to really bring out the emotions that he's feeling and the, you know, th just everything that's around him and the way that you've described it has made it so vivid and so visual, even though it's a, uh, you know, a written material. Um, and I really liked the repetition of the of words like lies or the baying of the hounds. I think it really brings home a point, and I really like that. Um, in terms of what can be improved, um, the setting is very unclear. Sorry, that. Sorry. 
The setting is very unclear, to me at least. Um, I didacted those words, but there are a couple of words that I feel like didn't really fit with the setting that you're going for. Words like bomb, like I don't know if a bomb would be would exist in this time. Like the as as you read further, there's a lot of dialogue, and the dialogue presents itself as if you know it's set in a much earlier time. Um, and I think you should avoid like comparisons or words like bomb or relating things to like things that are present as opposed to previous. Um, there was a lot of tense changes, and I've found that this is a very common. I have found that um, tenses are very difficult to um, sort of present when you're talking from a first person perspective. Um, I have had difficulties with it. Um, I know many people who have had dif difficulties with it. I would suggest that you stick to past tense because it's the easiest one to sort of fall back on. Present tense is a lot more difficult to do um, and it takes a lot of reviewing and making sure that it sounds okay. There's a lot of changes in narrative voice, you keep changing I and he, you keep disassociating the character's body parts from himself, so instead of saying my eyes or my stomach or my lungs, you'll say the stomach, the eyes, the lungs, you need to relate these back to the character. It might have, it, this might have been like a stylistic um, thing that you were trying to do, but I, I feel like it doesn't really work. Um, and I think you really need to relate everything back to the character because that's your focal point and that's who you're trying to make everyone feel for. Um, you sort of miss an opportunity to use dialogue, which I've not really covered in this reading, but um, if you want to see my notes, you're more than welcome to see them. I'm more than, I'm more than happy to send them to you. Um, you've sort of missed an opportunity to use your dialogue as a way to describe and portray emotion and feeling. Um, you've like used this sort of technique that I've seen with a lot of recent writers where you'll just write text and write text under it and that's the dialogue and you sort of assume who's saying what. Um, I feel that you need to signpost better, A, because I think you can present, with, with the vocabulary and the techniques that you use, I feel that you can present a very interesting picture and of emotion and feeling and secondly, because you really need to signpost who's saying what. Because I'm sure it makes sense when you read it, as you know you know who's saying what. But when someone from the outside reads it, it's much more difficult to understand um, and sort of guess who's saying what. Um, uh, and a few sort of minor points. Um, one avoid subplots in short stories. There's just not enough time to cover them. Um, later on in the story you mention a double personality. Avoid that, that's too big for the story. Way too big for the story. You know, stick to, oh he led a double life, or you know, he had an alter ego, or he lived a, you know, he had a secret. If you say double personality, that's going to take a lot of explanation that, you know, you just don't want to deal with. And the second thing, which I believe is a fault of novellas, is the formatting is a little strange. Um, but just to put it in here, and this formatting is going to appear in every single review that I do because novellas always manages, like their formatting is so weird. Um, but just to make a point of it, one paragraph, one point. That's how you write a paragraph. As soon as you're done with that point, start a new paragraph. Um, but yeah, that is my review. Um, and my overall review is that I hope that you get more attention because of this because you and because you deserve it. I think that your writing sort of techniques are very interesting and you've like I've, I've skimmed through a couple of your other stories and I think that they're quite good and I think that you have a, a talent that needs to be recognized. Um, so yeah, well done to you Julio, and to everyone else who's watching this, I really hope that you give him some love and support. He seems to be a new member on Mavellas, and I think 
he could really use that friendship and that community that I had seen when I had joined. Um, you know, I really hope that he gets to feel that welcoming, like, cheerful spirit that I felt when I was a member of Novellas and was actively on the site. And I was actively on the site for about two years before I stopped because of all the issues that surround my, surround my life. Um, but yeah, I understand this video is very long, but I did have to read a story. Um, so, you know, however you've watched this or listened to this, please do leave me some feedback. Um, if you liked it, share, subscribe. I'm, I'm losing my voice here, I'm just saying a bunch of words. Like, share, subscribe. And if you didn't like it, please do tell me um, how to improve, what you want me to add, what you want me to take away, or if you think I talk too much. And let's be let's be clear, I'm never going to stop talking too much. Um, but I would like some feedback. I am not infallible, I would like some feedback. Um, but thank you for watching this. As you can see, I'm much happier and a lot more relaxed. And I hope from now on um, that I can sort of be like this and I can do more things like this where I'm just being myself and living my best life. Um, last point, uh, I don't really know what to call this series. If anyone has any suggestions, I would love to hear it. But thank you. Goodbye.